So thanks for putting up with our delay due to the weather, and welcome to the Garden of 1,000 Buddhas and our beautiful tent that we've been practicing in for the last 10 days. And today is our fourth annual Tibetan Cultural Festival, which was born out of the idea that um, the community would like to get to know better not only meditation and how to use one's mind to create peace in the world, but also <laughs> some of the means with which the Tibetan Buddhists particularly use uh, these types of rituals that uh, help kind of bring our minds to that place. So today you're gonna get a, a, a wonderful treat, but most importantly, we have our very esteemed creator and founder of the garden, Tulku Sangak Rinpoche, and his brother and resident abbot here, Ken Rinpoche. And they're going to hopefully explain a little bit about all of the dances and rituals that you will see, take part in, and it's a very intimate setting, so we hope that you'll enjoy it. Probably be several hours. And there's some water in the back here, and of course the restroom's outside. If you need to get up, please feel free to come and go. And maybe when they start dancing, the rain will stop and we can open the gates and enjoy the outside weather as well. My name is Deborah Hicks, and I will try to MC as best I can today with our wonderful Sangha members here <laughs> with you. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Tulku Sangak Rinpoche and his attendant, translator, and Ken Kempo himself, Namchak Dorje, who we love and adore, both of them. And they will try to uh, welcome you to the garden and explain a little bit about what you'll see first. That's all. Uh, to all of you attending the first event today, Tashidelek, welcome. ตะกาเดเนเอ่อตันเดงาตัวตัวตะตะตันงาตัวเอเนเอ่อตะชัดชุกพอละตันงาตัวตังโกยากระดาเนเนเตนนาเกยานาเตนเนงาตัวเอเ
ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะนี้ตะน
So then, after that, uh, the merchants brought this message to in in the presence of Buddha, and then Buddha uh, responded. Uh, Buddha ordered to uh, uh, someone nearby to paint his image, draw his image. And that was the first time that. And in the Buddhist history, that Buddha's image was erected, Lord Buddha's image was erected, uh, drawn. So <clears throat> at that time, uh, the the artist who drew the Lord Buddha's image, often looking to the Buddha's Buddha's body, so Buddha was too much powerful. Buddha was so powerful that he he couldn't resist. The artist couldn't resist the resplendent of Buddha. So like. He was uh, he was really hesitated to draw that, and Buddha, he was his drawings were not that good. But then Buddha, his through, through his miraculous power, uh, imitated light rays, and then that uh, the drawing the drawing of Buddha's image became very beautiful. And then so that the first drawing of the uh, Buddha's image was called uh, the light rays image of the picture of the Buddha. And uh, with that, with that image, uh, and then another letter, another uh, letter to uh, was sent to the princess, uh, the prince of the princess of the uh, king in Sri Lanka. And back uh, when she got that, she she was so inspired. Uh, she uh, she like she was deeply moved, and then so she uh, displayed that image. And read the letter to all the public around there, and everyone there uh, was like everyone. They uh, naturally they got uh, mo uh, they got the real spiritual realization, attained a spiritual realization, and then uh, they were they attained a liberation. So uh, so likewise. So this origination of the creating image of the. Uh, representation of uh, Buddha's enlightened body, speech, and mind uh, uh, occurred during that time, and so likewise we have today. We have same likewise. So we have these thousand Buddhas and thousands uh, stupas representing the enlightened uh, form, speech, and mind of the Buddha here in the Thousand Buddha Garden here, early Montana. Uh, the next one, then. And the meaning, the main core meaning inside the message uh, of the Buddha uh, the letter written to that princess was uh, commit no uh, commit no evil uh, no evil and accumulate virtue as much as possible that was the message oh yeah then it 
Tene ta te re ngaran zogo pe ene ee. Ta te ke sanji ke kote ya ma. Tene tong shel de nana ta te ao poda nana e chel ma. Piyam che. Ene te na yin ke tene kare sa guru bu tene te ke sanji ke song de so la. Tene rolmo ke drata ke pa rolmo ramde ke tene. Ta trove chembo ta dia kang ke tene trove chembo tene ya bre. Trove chembo tro che ne. Tene. Trongjerga metamji tsuru dini tene te tamjela ma Ene yang te nangye jene koso ma re te nde kao so te tamjela yang tene Chik tsang ma la pe Chik sem la droa nye tene chik dewa top Tene si chepe loji chi Tene chik yabre Tene chik son zang ta ngaran zo pe ne chik nga zo Kitang ke ta nga zo chik zambu leng ke rikyong ra mida ma bo yore Tene nga zo ta ting sang ke tukap te nga zo zambu leng tamjie chik Ani nyong dra ta sing kya mang po yewi tukap la Ani ngaran zo rik yong da so tam jie pene shi do jie ya ta Tene pene se tunam jie ya Tene te nangye jie ke so jie ya pishe da kye chim po yew ka Tene son ta tene ngha so de tene ta mi se ke chi ene Yang ta ta tik kare se Po mo mtai tri shen ke tene ngha so ko le te ni nrekhe jia ba nangye Tene san jie 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 ko te la yon de chim po yew ka Pena ta ngaran so ke semba majik ba, semba debo me ba. Tene ngaran so kange mong po, nyodat mong po yodhi. Tene ngaran so tega chik ngaran so yang. Ene sanji ke leng khanda wa lando. Ene sanji khanda chi yog do ka ten rao chi yada. Tene ten nangye sanji khanda chi de ba ten nangye chi de dang chi. Thos chi ene semda lelo chi chena. Rangji ke tene ngaran so ke pedo. Sorwa dang tene ke chi ene shibde. Sorwa tene tere chi nye tupya chi Yongwa yore Tene chi sonda da da de yang yongwa chi Kare sa ngasu cha shi e dao chi pena Da yang dakru chi yang dao chi cha dao yore So So with the message The message that Buddha sent To this princess of Sri Lanka Her name was Moody teaching in Tibetan in Sanskrit, it means mukta lalata, mukta lata, which means winding string of pearls. So her name was like that, Muti Tishing. Like, like her account. So the, during that time, the, after receiving that message from the Buddha, and she declared that words of Buddha in Sri Lanka, uh, in the palace there was big gong. She rang that gong, and then sang this uh, the words of Buddha with uh, melodious tunes uh, were open where everyone could hear that and if everyone was moved, inspired, delighted, everyone liked it, everyone open. At that moment, everyone realized the nature of mind and then everyone uh, attained uh, the liberation, peace, gained the peace of mind. So likewise, uh, we have this uh, a representation of the enlightened body, speech, and mind of the Buddha here. So uh, uh, we could, like same incident, we could have it could happen same here, where the upon seeing these statues, the representations of the enlightened uh, represent, representations of the enlightened body, speech, and mind of the enlightened beings here, having here, uh, people get in uh, the main motive. The main aim of having here is to get inspired by, get peace and harmony within your mind, within oneself. So especially during this time, this era, so many conflicts going on, so many problems all over the world. So what we need, we need inner peace in our mind, calm in our mind, uh, liberation in your, our mind, oneself. Uh, we, need, uh, we need to light ourselves. So, these uh, representations of enlightened bo uh, body, speech, and mind in the Buddha garden uh, uh, really helps to bring this. You can just, whoever has these problems like mental trauma, agitation, all this tension, stress, all these yeah. things, if you have all these things, uh, you, can re you could really go into the Buddha garden, yeah. sit there like yeah. Lord Buddha, yeah. and be, uh, maintain his posture, keep your mind calm, and you will gain the realization, the inner realization in your in peace in your mind. So you will engender that. So uh, <clears throat> so we have many cultures all across the world, all globe, and uh, each culture is different from other. So we we should 
really know each other's culture, understand and the deep meaning uh, inside, uh, uh, embraced inside. So, like, uh, so therefore, uh, we have this uh, called Tibetan cultural event uh, today, uh, 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 hoping to fulfill all these aims. Well, so in it, so what in it, in it, long we get down and draw a teller, in it, not to be same short yet, I think that she had it. In it, you're back at all, tell me about that, not to send your tamji, chicarse, tamata, you bussing your chop. Then I thought someone, they were drunk, don't have me drunk. Then it's someone, chicarse, any chicwa in bala. As we mentioned before, uh, the main basic fundamental view of Buddhism is non-violence. Uh, the main conduct uh, of Buddhism is non non uh, not doing harm to uh, uh, the main view of Buddhism is to gain peace and harmony, liberation of your one's own mind. Uh, main conduct is non-violence, not harming anyone, even the single insects, bugs in the garden. So that's our main uh, conduct that everyone should apply on up one's um, conduct. And uh, so, uh, as we know, every sentient beings, uh, uh, they wish for peace and uh, liberation, salvation in their mind, and nobody wants suffering. So, so elevate it to il eliminate the sufferings uh, that uh, the sentient beings have. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the main aim of the Buddhism, main goal of the Buddhism. So this, uh, the cultural, that we have in Tibet and the Himalayas, this Tibetan culture is deeply the rooted into this Buddhist view conduct, view and conduct. Yeah, Sanji Pozo ね、こと Sanji and uh, finally, Rinpoche is going to share another story from the time of the Buddha. Uh, during the time of the Buddha, so Buddha was meditating while Buddha was meditating under the tree in India. So many monkeys showed up and surrounded him. And then, so uh, since Buddha was not moving, he was still meditating, not moving, as monkeys uh, came near, and then first the monkeys were hesitating to come near, 
they used to throw stones, stick something to the Buddha, and Buddha was still not moving. They came near, they took advantage, and then monkeys came nearby, nearby, and when they arrived near Lord Buddha, uh, then like still Buddha was not moving. So they and then like uh, they some monkeys climbed on the lap of Buddha, and some climbed on the shoulder of Buddha, some climbed on the head of the Buddha. Still Buddha was not moving. He was staying still in meditation. Mode. And then and they try to pull Buddha's ear, Buddha's hair, and Buddha's still not moving. And so, you know, monkeys are very naughty. And they like to, and, uh, they like to imitate Buddha. So, like, so they were trying to imitate Buddha. So since Buddha was not moving, still sitting in that posture, you know, that you can, the, you can, you can find the Buddha posture, and the Buddha looking up at the Buddha's statue. So, like, Buddha was remaining still like a statue. So then like monkeys also try to imitate like Buddha. They try to remain still like that. Some on the tree, some on the rock, looking at the Buddha. And uh, maybe because of the blessings of the Buddha, and also because due to their previous merit, and also the, the crucial body posture they maintained, like meditation posture, like Buddha they maintained. So they attained realization, they gained realization. <laughs> So, yeah, that's, uh, that's where Rinpoche is narrating the story from the uh, time of the Buddha. So, so if you go in the garden and maintain, like, be like those monkeys, <laughs> you might attain, you will attain. You, even if you don't attain realization, you might gain some peace in your mind. Yeah, we are we are few in this. Uh, we are monkey in this story. We are like our we our mind is really like monkey. So even monkeys can be uh, you know changed, moved by this. Uh, often have uh, imitating the posture of Buddhas. If we try, of course, why not? We have. We have more super intellectual than monkeys. Of course, we can try. We can have more advent. We can gain more uh, benefit. Mm-hmm. ね、で、こう、ラブがすぎるわ。でね、こうたいやんだらと ナムジュンガダンラオチセヨメテ。テレハラムガンラオチドテネテネコイヤドヤチタン。ヤンサンジェケヤンヤドヤチタン。テネコペチネタコインジムネタハンロゴドチェ。テネコパンロゴです。パ
Masuk tapi ada kes yang masuk region drama ni dah, cerun drama ni dah, susu susu tapi yang nyabut tu susu tapi susu lojo je. Tapi yang masuk ni, mana kita boleh tahu? Tapi kita lepas susu tapi yang masuk dua lain kes ada macam ni, tiga orang macam ni. Tapi susu tapi yang masuk itu ni dia ada ni tiga macam ni tren je. Tapi dalam masuk lawat tak kau lah tapi pis. Kita ni masuk ni yang tu dia sejauh ni orang. Tapi tim ni nak ambil tu soal samsal yoga tu ni dia lebih macam ni kalau saya Jadi tu ni pape ni yang tenang aku cakap ni orang, tenang mahu buat tenang ni cakap aku cuci tangan tu soal tu, tangan aku tu pernah cakap ni trouble cakap ni yang tenang ni kasih kau kerja tu soal, tenang cangsa jep, tenang tenis cakap ni kahandar tenang aku cakap ni dah cakap ni orang tu, tenang tenis soal tangan aku tenis tenang tu ngau tu siapa tenang ngau tu siapa tenis tu cakap ni tenang dek Jesus tenang aku tu ni tenang dek and also another story from the time of Buddha. So this is the last story, don't worry. <laughs> so during the time of the Buddha, there was a... Uh, so uh, you know very well, Buddha is a very skillful teacher. So he has all these skillful means to guide the sentient beings, every student that's coming to him. The every student that's time to ripen, he goes to approach that student and then ripens him, he liberates him. He knows that he has all these skillful means to liberate all the sentient beings. So one uh, incident during the time of Lord Buddha, there was a very fam most famous musician in India. So he was a famous violin player, you know. Nobody in India played better than him, so he had too much pride in, in himself that nobody in the world can play better than me. So Buddha thought, okay, I'm going to tame him. His, his pride is not good, so Buddha approached him, you know. Then he was, he was playing his violin, you know, violin, uh, six strings, violin, violin in, in the, um, in, in some pl at some place, one place, and then Buddha approached him and he said, yeah, I, nobody in this world can play better than me. Then, and then Buddha, uh, Buddha stayed nearby him and played, started to play violin like him. And he played, uh, like, you know, he played, Buddha played very, uh, you know, in a very good melody, very better than him, and he was surprised. How come until now nobody played better than oh, this guy showing up and playing better than me? He cut uh, cut all the five strings and played with one string, you know. And one string he may try to make like 60 different kinds of sound with one string, one violin string. And then what? Uh, and then and then next, the Buddha cut all the strings of violin and still played. <laughs> <laughs> and then like he says. How come in this world there is such a guy that who could play without any string, you know? <laughs> so then, like his pride was gone. So you know, his pride, his his pride vanished. So he approached Buddha. Okay, please teach me how to play violin without string. <laughs> <laughs> I never found such uh, such guy to uh, such teacher. So please teach me. And then he Buddha responded, "It's all through the." Uh, interdependent nature, the cause and effect. So, so then, so you have to meditate. You teach. Then Buddha taught all the Dharma teachings. Then he attained liberation. So likewise, everything in the Buddhism, like dances, song, singing, song rituals, everything has a deep meaning of uh, interdependent origination, cause and effect. All this non-violence and all this uh, view, meditation, kind of all these are. Uh, hidden, embedded in this uh, culture. Uh, so that's why, uh, as, uh, as uh, mentioned earlier, uh, Buddha is a skillful teacher. He, ha he is trying to impart this message of peace, love, and uh, nature of interdependent origination, cause and effect, and all this through different modes, different methods of like even the singing, dancing, and different kinds of rituals. So Buddha really did that, re taught in that manner. So that's why, so we as a follower of Buddha, and in our culture we have all these uh, messages embedded, uh, hidden inside uh, these, uh, so many uh, things like dances, sing, song, and uh, all these things. 
So, uh, so that's why uh, uh, today we are going to display all these uh, various uh, dances and songs and all these things uh, now one by one. And uh, Rimuche uh, started this, uh, initiated this uh, Tibetan cultural festival. Uh, one reason, uh, so as uh, we know, that to globalize globalization, uh, we need to interchange, uh, incorporate all the cultures together, come together. So we need to exchange our cultural tradition uh, uh, to enforce. So we have to to do this. We need to we need certain. Uh, platform to display and exchange. So, so, so to, uh, for this reason, Rinpoche started this event. So uh, that's what Rinpoche, is, uh, Rinpoche wants to share as an, introduction, as an introduction. So everyone, please enjoy the uh, yeah, songs and dances that we're going to offer now. The obstacle removing dance, uh, so it's to remove the, all the negative evil forces to remove uh, for our liberation. So that's called the evil. Neg obstacle removing dance.
Now the, uh, with this dance, all the uh, this dance is to remove all all the obstacles as mentioned. Uh, so all the grounds, uh, all the platforms are purified now. So now we need blessings. So we need to invoke the blessings. So we're inviting the blessings. So through this dance, uh, Dakini dance, which the dance of heroines. Uh, so with this, we are invoking. Uh, we're bringing, showering down the blessings. Daniela <coughs>
Then... Uh, is going to talk more about this uh, dance which was performed, the Dakini dance. So these uh, five Dakini dances, uh, you have seen these five different colors, uh, white, yellow, red, and green, and blue. Uh, these five colors represent the five elements. The blue is sky, a white is uh, uh, a white is water, hello is earth element, a red is fire element, and the green is with the wind element. So from Buddhist perspective, uh, this is known as these five elements are known as the uh, the five great mothers because all these animate uh, inanimate things arise from the from these five elements. So, 
during the ancient time in Tibet, the native Tibetans considered, considered uh, the earth element as the great mother. <coughs> But in Buddhism, uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, the sky element is considered the great mother and more uh, more important. So that's why right now we have when we had uh, when he, when they had the, the dances of the five dakinis, the earth el uh, the sky element blue one one was in the center. Then yeah, yes, in reality, everything is on in the sky, on the sky. Everything is dependent on the space. Uh, so earth, fire, wind, all elements in the space. So uh, the, uh, the space should be clear and clean and important. So uh, <clears throat> that's why we have this, uh, the sky, or the space element uh, in the center that's uh, considered very important by the Buddhist. ก็เจ็บถ้าพูดได้แต่ว่าเราสอบเอ่อเกเจ็บถ้าพูดได้แต่ว่าเราสอบเอ่อเกเจ็บถ้าพูดได้แต่ว่าเราสอบเอ่อ
Then it dela young kid, young pangish about broke wet, mean get it. There they can't do so that go and eat a dang around so good up and any shed of charity. That other power day, then a tub of chat dang. Tubs and a dang around so good, then so what in it? Jean Pang, some of that, so what she go to what in the songs of Ben, Jean Pang at the air, tub, or that in it so he gets him to put in the water. So this, uh, we have the dances of the heroes and dances of the heroines. Uh, so the male aspect and the female aspect. So this another representation. The main representation, the of uh, uh, representation of the female aspect is the wisdom aspect of the nature, and the, the male dances. Uh, the male dances represent the uh, method aspect. So we have wisdom and method combination creates a supreme thing. Right, so that's the, also the nature of the reality. So, uh, uh, when we say the the nature, the aspect of the method, the aspect of methods really compassion, altruistic, uh, benefiting, uh, benefiting others. This action. So these are represented by the male aspect, the method, and then the female is represented the wisdom. So we have have to have both in ones. We have in the nature like that. We have to realize we have to engender both of these. So to represent that, we have this uh, male and female aspect of the dances, the dances of the heroes and the dances of the heroines. The next we have the dances of the heroes. <coughs>
Yeah, man. So uh, we have completed the, both the dance of the heroes and heroines, the, the dances of the method and wisdom. So this era, this contemporary time, we have to have the union of the method and wisdom. Of course, we have reached to the pinnacle of scientific, uh, in, uh, scientific exploration. We have reached uh, our uh, the world uh, development of this world is uh, be better than ever before. But uh, from the aspect of method, compassion, altruistic altruism, and all these things. Uh, we are lacking. It's not uh, not in the pinnacle stage uh, as as like as uh, wisdom. Uh, so in order to lead our world to the positive uh, and a better world, uh, to benefit all the, to bring the actual ultimate peace and liberation to all the sentient beings, uh, we we must have this uh, uh, both the aspect of wisdom and method combined in a union together. So that's why these dances are representing representation of these uh, the, these enlightened qualities. So next uh, is a Tibetan song performed by uh, two Tibetan uh, young ladies from Santa Fe, New Mexico. prepare this on a short notice <laughs> so <laughs> half an hour before <laughs> um, so here's another song um, don't know <laughs> how all well all the lyrics um, oh yeah so goes Yinduma Chodemo Po Denchi Shola Chaks Demetore 
Indo Uh, says, thank you for both of them for presenting, offering this unique Tibetan uh, and uh, song related to Tibetan culture. So the the inner meaning of the song that presented by two of these uh, beautiful girls uh, talks about the the jewel in the in our mind. Jewel outside, jewel everywhere in the place. So talking about the jewel or gem, uh, precious jewel inside our mind. So, uh, if you have this precious jewel, uh, you have everything, right? Uh, your, all your wishes are fulfilled. So likewise, uh, so this uh, culture and tradition is very precious. If you have culture and tradition, you have everything. You are it will accomplish your wishes. Uh, that's why the meaning of the song is, uh, yeah, should be like that. And the second song is about the law. And uh, yeah, it's very, uh, very good song, very, uh, very good song, excellent song. But uh, Rinpoche says he doesn't know much to explain about the law. <laughs> but uh, it's, it seems like uh, uh, more pleasant than the uh, sound of flute and the taste of honey. <laughs> and the next item is the Tibetan snow line dance. Yeah, <laughs> So, uh, the snow line dance. Uh, so, Tibetans are uh, unique, special. Hello? Okay, you can hear me. <laughs> Sorry. 
uh, so it's very unique to Tibetan, this snow line, uh, snow line, because uh, Tibetans from since long time had uh, this, it's actually a kind of mystery whether this snow line exists in Tibet or not in the snow mountains of Tibet, you know. It's white in color and it has this, uh, the hair, the greeny hair. So, um, <coughs> But uh, it represents the snow, snow mountain, r snowland mountain ranges of Tibet. So that's why even the Tibetan national flag has the picture of the line. So, uh, so that's why we have this Tibetan, uh, Tibetan snow line dance. <laughs> Yes. え、ただがらんぞ、え、ね、uh, so, yeah, uh, in one way people think uh, that's a mystical animal which doesn't exist in Tibet. But in a spiritual way, that's not like that. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, Tibet is situated, uh, located in the Himalaya region, Himalayan region, so in the Himalaya. So many of the mountain ranges, highest peaks, uh, high peaks of the Himalayan ranges lie in Tibet, so almost like there are around like 12 uh, mountain uh, ranges with highest peaks in the world. So, uh, so each of these mountain ranges are the resident of these uh, the uh, goddesses, the female protectress of the Tibet, of Tibet. So uh, one of them, those are called the 12 great mother protectors of Tibet, Tibet. So one of them is called Tashi Tsiringma, which means auspicious long life goddesses. So which uh, she inhabits one of the highest peak of the Tibet. And uh, that god is uh, considered the protector, protectors of the Tibet, uh, Tibetan region, Tibetan land. She's residing on the highest peak of Tibet and she's riding on this snow land that uh, which is depict, depicted in this Tibetan uh, snow line dance. She's riding on this white snow line with green hair. So that's why, uh, so she is regarded as the protector's mother or by all the Tibetans. So it, it, she, uh, her right is the Tib uh, that Tibetan snow line. So that's why it, uh, as, uh, it has a deep meaning inside to have this Tibetan line uh, in the Tibetan culture. え、ね、で、まあ、そう、これは何級マダルコンだった。プログラム、単語、チョンキ、ロジネ、レバヨサレ、レバヨレ。ならんとた、もまてね、た、カルセ。え、ね、た、ランキングことたみてにおれたてに
so this story of this goddess's female protectors at Suring Ma of Tibet uh, dates back to the ancient uh, Tibetan uh, shamanism before even before Buddhism uh, arrived in Tibet. So the ancient shamanism considered uh, these goddesses as the protector of Tibetan land. And, uh, and uh, so these mountains and Tibetan flag represent this, yeah, the, because Tibet is the mountain surrounded by these high peak snow mountain ranges. So, uh, and then um, it's uh, sealed by these uh, snow lines. So that's why the snow line considered very sacred and precious uh, to Tibetan culture. So this Tibetan line is coming right now from Tibet. Yeah, so not fr uh, he's not uh, traveling by land, he's flying from the sky. And uh, that's no line, uh, because in Tibet it's known, the another synonym of the snow line is line is called, we call five phase. Well, the reason why we call five phase to this snow line is because it can move any five direction up, you know, like all directions, so like forward, backwards, right, left, up, like that. So that's why it's flying on five directions. So that's why we call the, the animal with five faces. It can move any direction. Lasso. Please enjoy. No. Okay, I'm gonna call the snow line. He lost the line. He's looking for the line. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm coming in Tibet. Very long time here. He is light. Yeah, he. I don't know he or she. Maybe I can ask you. Are you she or he? He. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Do you like food? <laughs> Maybe my lion like his meat. <laughs>
How is this no line? <laughs> Maybe if you climb the Himalayan peaks, if you see this kind of line, you won't be scared. There's so many Tibetan stories uh, uh, about the snow lines. Sometimes these uh, goddesses uh, milking these snow lines and then <laughs> giving the milk of the snow line. Actually, uh, this, uh, uh, as we mentioned before, there are 12 protectors, uh, goddesses in Tibetan mountain ranges. All these female deities uh, ride uh, different kinds of animals and different kinds of cats. Uh, tigers, leopards, and all these things. So the main one uh, who is riding the lion is the considered the principal, the principal deity. Ne, that the, ne, Kalas. Uh, that the young lamo, the so good main, the so thing sorry, thing sorry, I'm going to go rub it down. Me, the so good that main, the so thing sorry, I'm going to go rub it down. And this female protectors of Tibet are not only the legend, they really did appear in ancient time. And uh, we still have these clans of these uh, female deities uh, until these days. Uh, uh, in, the, in the history of Tibet, uh, it mentions that um, in the olden time, uh, there were empire uh, ruled by the empress, uh, female ruler. So it was during that time, these 12 goddesses, which we call 12 Tenma goddesses in Tibet, Tenma Chungi. So the, those were of during those period. Uh, and uh, it was uh, during that time, that those time, that uh, uh, like single uh, one-to-one relationship, male and female relationship, like uh, having one husband and one wife system wasn't there at that time. So like uh, there were no uh, emphasis on the uh, the father, so only mother was emphasized. Mother was the principal in the family, and then the female was the principal ruler, administrator. So it was during that time. And gradually, the system of uh, believing or worshipping regarding these great mothers as a protector goddess uh, system appeared, originated. Uh, now we have this uh, demonstration displaying of the the Tibetan short practice, uh, practice of severance.
And in Buddhism, we have this mentioning of this great emptiness, emptiness, the devoid of self-nature. All, all the phenomena is uh, devoid of self-intrinsic nature, the, which is called, the, we have a technical term called emptiness. เออมาจิกลับจิดรอมาซึ่งเด้เนี่ยเนี่ยคนรองกิตาเป็นมิเซกิตาเตทับเตเป็นน่ะตาตัวเนี่ยตองบานี่ตะกองกุตะดากินซ
So that's why through this kind of practice we come to realize, we come to the point that this the thing called the great economy, uh, the motivation, the notion that everyone is equal, uh, deserving peace, love, compassion, liberation, not deserving suffering, harm, or violence and violence and all these things. So this kind of motivation, everyone has this kind of motivation to achieve this kind of state. So we have to practice uh, the church sovereign practice. Lasso, no, no, no. Please start, begin.
Thank you so much for the <laughs> wonderful church practice. Thank you, De thank you so much, Deborah Hicks, for leading the wonderful church practice. <laughs> All her team. <laughs> they, they teach the next is the Black Hat Dance, <laughs> of, uh, performed by Kendra Mache. <laughs> Thanks all the church mothers, female church practitioners. You guys have removed obstacles, purified our negativities, obstacles, petty comments, all are purified by your church. Thank you for that. Yeah, before Rinpoche was feeling sleepy, drowsy, and now like he's awake. It's so maybe because of the blessings of your church practice. Okay. Maybe because of coffee. <laughs> Rinpoche is not sure because of coughing he's awake or because of the practice he's awake. Any? Hmm. Uh, now the black hat dance is more, yeah, it's more interesting uh, <laughs> uh, because it's more rapid. The movements are quicker, so more. That's why I'm more interesting. That uh, the <laughs> Lumbatelatinetangetanichingato uh, the reason, a special reason we are performing this black hat dance uh, is to appease the local deities residing all over this local place. So not only humans residing over here, humans and animals, the other spirits uh, from the um, uh, infinite times, uh, pre-dominant, pre-times pre uh, residing here. So some Naga spirits underground and the rocks, trees, uh, valleys. So for them, uh, as a like um, treat for them, thanking them for uh, granting us this land uh, protection, help, and being on our side. So to please them, to thank them, uh, we are performing this black hand, black hat dance by offering the beverage to them. Yeah, like uh, the, it has been like maybe 10 or 20 years since we have arrived here. But before that, maybe like 200 years, 100 years before many people tr arrived here, many people arrived here. But even before that, so many beings existed here. Mm. So that's why the local spirits mm. yeah, always there. And <laughs> Thanksgiving, 
Kita konon suka tu lah, ngomong ngomong asal pelajar logik tu lihat jadi doa tak hitam macam ni dalam cik. Tapi konsol lah tentu ni orang lewat seperti long badai lah. Oh, tentu konsol orang asal tu sugar orang. Ah, it's like uh, this uh, dance is like uh, uh, offered as a gratitude to those local spirits who have been dwelling in this um, place from long time. It's like a Thanksgiving. So uh, that's why, like in Tibet, we have this uh, offering uh, rituals uh, to these uh, local protector deities. So he is same uh, like here. We are performing this um, like a dance, offering beverages to the local deities. <laughs> The same thing happened in Tibet when Buddhism first time Buddhism was brought to Tibet. The master, the great master, the saint, Tibetan uh, the saint who brought Buddhism to Tibet, Guru Padma Sambhava, uh, he did the same ritual of uh, pleasing and uh, regarding this ancient uh, uh, origin. Uh, deities of Tibet by offering this kind of rituals. So likewise, we are doing this blackhead dance. Tini,当我看中啊，说，等你得上来，我都看中得是马家的钱呢。等你用这等于忙不着的，等你得了，等你别就是那个人，我就拍片。等你打看中了呀，等你再吃吧，拍等于钱。等你啊，这个看吧，
ね、たたて、え、ティラテチェオレ。た、ノマ、ミトソコチャンガボシュエサレ。てててチャンガナテネ、セルテルロゴヨレ。セルテルベシビエチェテネテラチャンドチェネ。てね、コゾノマラトソ
so this was the system of the ancient Tibet. So during the time of uh, during the time of ancient Tibetan kings, uh, so like even the ladles to serve the alcohol and food was made out of gold and silver, and uh, so then uh, when you serve alcohol, they have to serve, serve with the golden. Uh, ladles and all these golden balls and uh, yeah, cups and all these things. So, and even when they talk between the communication between the Tibetan king and the minister, they have to sing in a very melodious tune, in a poetic phrases. You know, that's what. Uh, so during that time, during the time, during like uh, maybe ancient Tibetan king's time, uh, so such kind of system existed. Uh, and uh, the most uh, famous uh, sport game was the horse race and then playing archery. So those were the famous game of the ancient Tibetan kings. So the... So the final very uh, funny dance that you have uh, seen, you have seen here, it's called the Atsara in Tibetan. It means uh, like, yeah. Uh, it's actually it's uh, like clown, you know. It's jokester, <laughs> entertainer. So during the in the meantime, the different kind of dances uh, um, are changing. So this kind of uh, entertainer, a jokester, clown dance appear. So uh, this dancer has the greatest freedom because he doesn't have to follow the musical instruments, codes, and any anything. He can randomly dance anyway, whatever he wants. <laughs> Okay, so that's the end of the Tibetan uh, dances. Now we have Tibetan circle dances, pop songs. So, yeah, so we're going to have this Tibetan circle dance outside because the weather is very good now. Wonderful weather. So, everyone, I request everyone to uh, be outside, uh, make a circle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, before that, uh, we have a short announcement, please. Uh, the, uh, I think Deborah Hicks, she's better in announcing because... We wanted to, um, earlier, when there were more people here, announce that a wonderful, auspicious event happened this week. And we have visitors from Santa Fe, Lama Gurme and Tuku Oregon. And we really wanted to welcome them and their families for here, but also let you know that um, Lama Gurme is an incredible artist. And his work is behind you if you look at the Tonkas. Is a very detailed, amazing ancient tradition of Tonka painting, and he is an absolute um, ma magic magician at doing this work. We have many Tonkas. He is. Uh, we have commissioned him, and many of the foundations we work with have commissioned him, and he's done amazing artwork for them. It is priceless, blessed, um, and imbued with a lot of the wisdom tr tradition that he um, is a, is an expert in. So, if you are drawn to these Tonkas, he does have a few of his pieces of work here. He traveled all the way from Santa Fe and with his family, wonderful people who have joined us for the week. So we're very honored that they came and took Oregon, that the family is all here to be with us for the week. So 
Um, also, I just wanted to announce that inside the store we have um, opportunities for membership and if um, donations and things today and all of our festivals are free events and family events. We'll be back for the Peace Festival on September 17th. So um, without further ado, maybe we're going to do a, a Tibetan circle dance here in the, in the uh, yard together on the lawn. Okay, so please uh, relax your mind and move your body randomly, whatever in the manner you want, <laughs> so that you get great benefit inside as uh, inner mind and the physical body. In and out. So uh, there is the, you can you can easily figure out Tibetan ladies in a Tibetan brocade days dress so you can follow their footsteps yeah their steps amazing it's very easy yeah yeah so they are the master dancers figure it out in okay ready i'm going i'm going one two three
Disco! Disco! Oh, 
Where are you from? Mazlaan. Sultan. Sultan. I like your dress.